Right, that was a very horrible attempt at the 20th century Fox Fox um logo. Uh yes, so that that's uh, because it's the 67th entry and that's a milestone or something. Oh, uh, 67th entry of the 100 days of narration challenge. That is fairly exciting, I guess, but we're going to be going into 70 soon, so that's also exciting. So it's hard to be excited about this milestone when 70 is also coming soon. So, it's like well, whatever. Anyway, for today's book, uh, this week being Roll Dahl Week, if you haven't uh, uh, joined us before, welcome! I'm doing uh, Roll Dahl Week and uh, going to read several passages. Passages, no way, no. Pages, pages from a Roll Dahl book. And today's book is going to be somewhere because I forgot to pick it up. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Today's book is going to be, again, from the collected short stories of Roald Dahl, because there's a lot of short stories in here, so I might as well just read another one from it, because it's great and stuff. Uh, I'll probably not read a whole short story this time, because I don't have a, a short story planned, so it could be actually a moderately longer story than a usual stor short story, because last time was about... Eight pages? And and yeah, that's doable. Eight pages is doable, but I don't know about the, his other short stories, which could be considerably longer and more um, thingy, more word That's also means long, but in another sense. Um, I'm not very good with the, with the whole language thing, you may, may notice at times. Anyway, let's all do the whole flippy, floopy, flippy, 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 flippy thing. And uh, we, we will see where we are. Now, the reason why I don't want to read out again, a full thing again is because last time I did this, my arm got really super tired. So no more reading for a half hour. Maybe I'll do that again for... I should probably just convert all my books into, like, Kindle format so I could read... No, not Kindle format. Kindle format is actually... Oh, God. I don't know. I just find it terrible that they don't put it into proper pages and try to format, format it to the size of the window. I just hate that. I, I just... I, I mean, I would prefer it to be, like, in PDF format where all the pages are... Okay, this is actually page... 10 or 11 of, of 200, not uh, not position 2043 out of 10,554. That's dumb. Unless, of course, there is a way to actually change Kindle settings so it actually does that, which would be very helpful. So if anybody can tell me how to do that on Kindle, that would be great. I would be most grateful for that. All right. So uh, again, with the flipping, and we'll stop at... Um... Oh. Oh. I don't know if I want to read from here, because the title of the short story is apparently Bitch. Um, uh, but, 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 we'll, 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 do, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. A short story called Bitch. Bitch, bitch. Bitch, I told ya you couldn't come back here no more. That's horrible. Um, I'm sorry, everybody in the South. Um, that's how you all sound to me when you come from the South. You all sound like angry people who are angry all the time. Okay, just trying to settle my arms into a position which I can vaguely find comfortable, and I'll just read four pages? Five pages? Uh, well, one of the two. Okay, so I'm in the middle of a short story called Bitch. And, uh, ah, starts in the middle of a sentence. This hasn't been a problem. This hasn't been a problem in a very long time, mainly because I start from the beginning rather than in the middle of something these days. Well, we'll try it anyway. Okay, starting from page 430, which doesn't mean anything anyway, because this is an, this is an omnibus. Um, so, Bitch by Roald Dahl. His head and yelled, I mean it, Pierre! I shall kill you if you don't stop! The boxer didn't even look up. Henry was hopping and dancing about the room, shouting, It's fantastic! It's magnificent! Unbelievable! It works! It works! We've done it, my dear Oswald! We've done it! The action stopped as quickly as it had began. It had begun. The boxer suddenly let go of the girl, stood up, blinked a few times, and then said, Where the hell am I? What happened? 
Simone, who seemed to have come through it all with no bones broken, jumped up, grabbed her clothes, and ran into the next room. Thank you, mademoiselle, said Henry as she flew past him. The interesting thing was, the bemused boxer hadn't the faintest idea of what he had been doing. He stood there naked and covered with sweat, gazing around a room trying to f and trying to figure out how in the world he came to be in that condition. He came to be in that condition. What did I do? he asked. Where's the girl? You were terrific, Henry shouted, throwing him a towel. Don't worry about a thing. The thousand francs is all yours. Just then, the door flew open, and Simone, still naked, ran back into the lab. Spray me again, she cried. Oh, Mons Monsieur Henry, spray me just one more time. Her face was light, her eyes shining brilliantly. Brilliantly. The experiment is over, Henry said. Go away and dress yourself. He took her firmly by the shoulders and pushed her back into the other room. Then he locked the, the door. Then he locked the door. Oh, God, I hate it when the word ends with, with a D and then there's a the as well. Then he locked the door. Half an hour later, Henry and I sat celebrating our success in a small cafe down the street. We were drinking coffee and brandy. How long will it go on? I asked. Six minutes and th six minutes and thirty-two seconds, Henry said. I sipped my brandy and watched the people strolling by on the sidewalk. What's the next move? First, I must write up my notes, Henry said. Then we shall talk about the future. Does, any does anyone else know about the formula? Nobody. What about Simone? She doesn't know it. Have you written it down? Not so anyone else could understand it. I shall do that tomorrow. Do it first thing. I'll want a copy, I said. I'll want a copy. What shall we call the stuff? We need a name. What do you suggest? Bitch, I said. Let's call it Bitch. Henry smiled and nodded his head, slowly. Uh, God, skip to the next line. Henry smiled and nodded his head slowly. I ordered more brandy. It would be great stuff for stopping a riot, I said. Much better than tear gas. Imagine the scene if you were sprayed in an angry mob. Nice, Henry said. Very nice. Another thing we could do, we could sell it to very fat, very rich women at fantastic prices. prices. We could do that, Henry answered. Do you think it would cure loss of virility in men? I asked him. Of course, Henry said. Impotence would... Impotence would go out the window. What about octogenarians? Oh, wow, that's a word that I don't say a lot. What about octo octogenarians? What about octogenarians? Them too, he said, though it would kill them at the same time. And marriages on the rocks? My dear fellow, Henry said, the possibilities are legion. At that precise moment, the seed of an idea came sneaking slowly into my mind. As you know, I have a passion for politics, and my strongest passion, although I am English, is for the politics of the United States of America. I've always thought it is over there, in that mighty and mixed-up nation, that the destinies of mankind must surely lie. And right now, there was a president in office whom I could not stand. He was an evil man who pursued evil policies. Worse than that, he was humorless and un and unattractive creature. He was a humorless and unattractive creature. So, why didn't I, Oswald Cornelius, remove him from office? The idea appealed to me. Wow, I wonder. I wonder which president. I wonder when this was written. So, which president would it be? Maybe it means. Maybe it's a roundabout. Thing. Um, <clears throat> politics! Politics. I never expected this to be so um, sexually inclined in politics uh, from the beginning. It's a bit, it's, it's slightly awkward. <laughs> it's a bit awkward. Uh, we'll keep reading. We'll keep reading. The idea appealed to me. How much bitch have you got in the lab at the moment? I asked. Exactly 10 cubic centimeters, Henry said. And how much is one dose? We used one cc for our test. That's all I want, I said. One cc. I'll take it home with me today. And a set of nose plugs. 
No, Henry said. Let's not play around with it at the stage. It's too dangerous. It is my property, I said. Half of it is mine. Don't forget our agreement. In the end, he had to give in. But he hated doing it. We went back to the lab, inserted our nose plugs, and Henry measured out precisely one cc of bitch into a semi-scent bottle. Sorry, into a small scent bottle. He sealed the stopper with wax and gave me the bottle. I implore you to be discreet, he said. This is probably the most important scientific discovery of the century, and it must not be treated as a joke. Even though you have a silly voice, Henry. I don't know why I gave you that silly voice, Henry. I'm so sorry. Uh, please forgive me for such a thing. This is basically Viagra, you know. A story of an airborne, of a, of a, a pheromone version of Viagra with, um, with politics and, and, a, and a very inappropriate name for said thing. From Henry's place, I drove directly to the workshop of an old friend, Marcel Brossolet, 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 B-R-O-S-S-O-L-L-E-T. I'm assuming it's French because I don't recognize the name. Then again, it could be German. Brossolet, 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 Brossolet sounds nicer, I think. Marcel was an inventor and manufacturer of tiny, precise scientific gadgets. He did a lot of work for surgeons, devising new types of heart valves and pacemakers and those little one-way valves that reduce intracra- oh boy, that, re that, that reduce intracranial pressure in hydrocephalics, 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 and reduce intracranial pressure. Yikes. Wow. That's a lot of R words. In case, you ha in case you haven't realized, R is like one of my biggest weaknesses in reading. We'll try that again. <clears throat> he did a lot of work for surgeons, devising new types of heart valves and pacemakers and those little one-way valves that reduce, that reduce, that reduce, redu oh God, that reduce intracranial pressure in hydrocephalics. I want you to make me, I said to Marcel, a capsule that will hold exactly one cc of liquid. To this little capsule, there must be attached a timing device that will split the capsule and release the liquid at a predetermined moment. The entire thing must not, the entire thing must not be more than half an inch long and half an inch thick. The smaller, the better. Can you manage that? Very easily, Marcel said. A thin plastic capsule, a tiny section of razor blade to split the capsule, a spring to flip the razor blade, and the usual preset alarm system on a very small ladies watch. Should the capsule be available? Why did I get? Why did I? Why did I do a Swedish chef for Marcel? Uh, let's let's try doing that again, only with a slightly less thick accent or whatever the hell I was doing there. Very easily, Marcel said, a thin plastic capsule, a thin section of razor blade to split the capsule, a spring to flip the razor blade, and the usual preset alarm system on a very small ladies watch. Should the capsule be fillable? Be fillable? Yes, make it so I myself can fill it and seal it up. Can I have it in a week? Why not? Marcel said, it is very simple. The next morning brought dismal news. The lecherous little slut Simone had some had apparently sprayed herself with the entire remaining stock of bitch, over nine cubic centimeters of it. The moment she arrived at the lab. Okay. Uh, let's try it again. That lecherous little slut Simone had apparently sprayed herself with the entire remaining stock of bitch, over nine cubic centimeters of it, the moment she arrived at the lab. She had then sneaked up behind Henry, who was just sitting who was just settling himself at his desk to write up, who was just settling himself at his desk to write up his notes i don't have to tell you what happened next and worst of all the silly girl had forgotten that henry had a serious heart condition damn it he wasn't even allowed to climb a flight of stairs so when the molecules hit the poor fellow so when the so when the molecules hit there should be a comma there, I think. So when the molecules hit him, the poor fellow didn't stand a chance. He was dead within a minute. Killed in action, as they say. And that was that. 
The infernal woman, woman might at least have waited until he had written down the formula. As it was, Henry left not a single note. I searched the lab after they had taken away his body, but found nothing. But I found nothing. So now, more than ever, I was determined to make good use of the only remaining cubic centimeter of bitch in the world. A week later, I collected from Marcel Brosselet... I collected from Marcel Brosselet a beautiful little gadget. The timing device consisted of the smallest watch I had ever seen, and this, together with the capsule and all the other parts, had been secured to a tiny aluminum plate three-eighths of an inch square. Marce Marcel showed me how to fill and seal the capsule and set the timer. I thanked him and paid the bill. As soon as possible, I traveled to New York. In Manhattan, I put up at the Plaza Hotel. I arrived there at about three in the afternoon. I took a bath, I took a bath, had a shave, and asked room service to send me up a bottle of Glenlivet and some ice. Glenlivet or Glenlivet? That's a wine, obviously, but I don't know what it is. Oh god, my shoulder's giving out. This book is heavy. Ow, 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 ow. Ah. Oh. Okay, keep going. I think this will be my last page. Oh, maybe one more page after this. Feeling clean and comfortable in my dressing gown, I poured myself a good strong drink in the delicious smalt. Oh, it's malt whiskey. It's it's not it's not wine. Whoops, my mistake. Not that I would know how to pronounce it anyway, even if I knew what drink it was, but. Whatever, it was good to know. Feeling clean and comfortable in my dressing gown, I poured myself a good strong drink of the delicious malt whiskey, then settled down in a deep chair with the morning's New York Times. My suite overlooked Central Park, and through the open window I could hear the hum of traffic and the blaring of cab driver's horns on Central Park South. Suddenly, one of the smaller headlines on the front page of the paper caught my eye. It said, President on TV tonight. I read on. The president is expected to make an important foreign policy statement when he speaks tonight at the dinner to be given in his honor by the daughters of the American Revolution in the ballroom of the Waldorf at the of the Waldorf Waldorf Astoria. Every time I see an R, I just ugh. in the ballroom in the ballroom of Waldorf Astoria Astoria Waldorf Astoria. I wonder how accurate this is uh, for people living in New York. Does this sound right to you? Is there really like a, a, a plaza hotel overlooking Central Park? I mean, I mean, this 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 book was written. Uh, uh, this short story was probably written many many years ago. But I'm assuming some of the architecture would remain the same. So, okay, just 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 curious, you know, just just wondering out loud to myself. <clears throat> Uh, let's try that sentence again. The president is expected to make the president is expected to make an important foreign policy statement when he speaks tonight at the dinner to be given in his honor by the daughters of the American Revolution in the ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria. My God, what a piece of luck! I had been prepared. I had been prepared to wait in New York for many weeks before I got a chance like this. The President of the United States does not often appear with a bunch of women on television, and that was exactly how I had to have him. He was an extraordinarily slippery, slippery customer. He was an extraordinarily slippery customer. He had fallen into many a sewer and had always come out smelling of shit. Yet he managed. Yet he managed every time to convince the nation. That the smell was coming from someone else, not him. So the way I figured it was this: a man who rapes a woman in full sight of twenty million viewers across the country would have a pretty hard time denying he ever did it. I read on. The president will speak a pro. Should I give this? It's it's a small passage in. Like a newspaper. The president will speak for approximately 20 minutes, commencing at 9 p.m., and all major TV networks will carry the speech. He will be introduced by Mrs. Oh boy. By Mrs. Elvira Ponsonby, the incumbent president of the Daughters of the American Revolution. When interviewed in her suite at the Waldorf Towers, Mrs. Ponsonby said, At the Waldorf Tower. I, I hate that word. Waldorf Towers, Mrs. Ponsonby said, It was 
perfect. Mrs. Ponsonby would be seated on the president's right. On the president's right. At ten past nine, precisely, the president will... will uh, with the president well into his speech and half the population of the United States watching, a little capsule nestling secretly in the region of Mrs. Ponsonby's bosom would be punctured and half a centimeter of bitch would come oozing out onto her gilt lame ball gown. Gilt lame ball... Is that... I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Gilt... Gilt... I, I know what's that. That's G-I-L-T. It's... um. It means basically shiny. Uh, lame, I, I've never heard. L-A-M-E and E is... Uh, has a, has a has an accent on it. Lame ball gown. Lame... I've never heard of that before. Lame ball gown. The breast, the president's head would come up and he would sniff and sniff again. His eyes would bulge. His turn to page nostrils would flare and he would start snorting like a stallion. Then suddenly he would turn and grab a hole of Mrs. Ponsonby. She would be flung across the dining table and the president would leap on top of her with a pie a la mode and strawberry shortcake flying in all directions. I leaned back and closed my eyes, savoring the, the delicious scene. I saw the headlines in the newspapers. I saw the headlines in the papers the next morning. President's best performance to date. Presidential secrets revealed to nation. President, inaug <laughs> President inaugurates blue TV. And so on. He would be impeached the next day, and I would sleep and I would slip quietly out of New York and head back to Paris. Come to think of it, I would be leaving tomorrow. I checked the time. It was nearly four o'clock. I dressed myself without hurrying. I took the elevator down to the main lobby and strode across and strode across to Madison Avenue. Somewhere around 62nd Street, I found a good florist shop. There I bought a cassage of three massive orchid blooms all fastened to the orchids were, uh, the orchids were cattleyas, cattleyas, C A T T L E Y A S, cat, cattleyas, cattleyas. I don't know. Uh, white and mauve splotches on them. They was, they were particularly vulgar. They were particularly vulgar. So undoubtedly was Mrs. Elvira Ponsonby. I had the shop pack them in a nice, handsome box. There's no nice in there. I had the shop pack them in a handsome box tied up with gold string. Then I strolled back to the plaza, carrying the box, and went up to my suite. I locked all the doors leading to the corridor in case the maid should come in to turn back the bed. I got out the nose plugs and Vaseline them carefully. I got out the nose plugs and Vaseline them carefully. I wonder if that's proper because it's a brand so is he allowed to say vaseline I don't, I don't know i locked all doors leading to the corridor in case the maid should come in to turn back the bed i got out the nose plugs and vaseline them carefully i inserted them in my nostrils ramming them home very hard i tied a surgeon's mask over my lower face as an extra precaution just as henry had done i was now ready for the next step with an ordinary nose dropper, I transferred my precious cubic centimeter of bitch from the scent bottle to the tiny capsule. The hand holding the dropper shook a little as I did this, but all went well. I sealed the capsule. After that, I wound up the tiny quad. After that, I wound up the tiny watch and set it to the correct time. It was three minutes after five o'clock. Lastly, I set the timer to go off and break the capsule at. Ten minutes past nine. <clears throat> the stems of the three huge orchid blooms had been tied together by the florist with a broad one-inch wide white ribbon, and it was a simple matter for me to remove the ribbon and secure my little capsule and timer to the orchid stems with cotton thread. When that was done, I wound the ribbon back around the stems over my gadget, then I retied the bow. Damn it, that didn't flow well. When that was done, I wound the ribbon back around the stems and over my gadget. Then I retied the bow. It was a nice job. Next, I telephoned the Waldorf and learned that the dinner was to be... Next, I telephoned the Waldorf and learned that the dinner was to begin at 8 o'clock. 
but that the guests must be assembled to be in the ballroom by 7.30 before the president arrived. At ten minutes to seven, I paid off my cab outside the Waldorf et ha, Waldorf ta, blah, 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 outside the Waldorf Towers entrance and walked into the building. I crossed the small lobby and placed my orchid box on the reception desk. I crossed the small lobby and placed my orchid box on the reception desk. I leaned over the desk, getting as close as possible to the clerk. I have to deliver this package to Mrs. Elvira Ponsonby, I whispered using a slight American accent. It's a, it is a gift from the president. The clerk looked at me suspiciously. Mrs. Ponsonby is introducing the president before he speaks tonight in the ballroom, I added. The president wishes her to have this corsage right away. Leave it here and I'll have it sent up to her suite, the clerk said. No, you won't, I told him. My orders are to deliver it in person. What's the number of her suite? The man was impressed. Mrs. Ponsonby is in 501, he said. I thanked him and went into the elevator. When I, got out of, when I got out of the fifth floor and walked along the corridor, the elevator operator stayed and watched me. I rang the bell to 501. The door was opened by the most enormous female I had ever seen in my life. I have seen giant women in circuses. I have seen f lady wrestlers and weightlifters. I have seen the huge Maasai women in the plains before Kilimanjaro. Really? Huge Maasai women? Is that is that right? Is that... You know, out of all the things I could be questioning, why am I questioning the fact that a huge Maasai woman in a world where there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's a something where one cubic inch of liquid would cause men to irresistibly cause... Caused them to have sex with with woman with a woman covered in that scent, one cubic inch of that scent, one cc. Ah, so really, that's probably the least fantastic thing so far. Where was I? <clears throat> oh yes, I've seen the huge Maasai Maasai women in the plains before Kilimanjaro, but never had I seen a female so tall and broad and thick as this one, not so, nor so thoroughly repugnant. She was groomed and dressed for the greatest occasion of her life, and in the two seconds that elapsed before either of us spoke, I was able to take it all in. I was able to take most of it in. The metallic silver-blue hair with every strand glued into place, the, br the brown pig eyes, the long, sharp nose sniffing for trouble, the curled lips, the prog... Wow. The prognothus store. The prognothus... Prognothus? Prognothus jaw. P-R-O-G-N-A-T-H-O-U-S. Prognathus, prognathus, prognathus jaw, the powder, the mascara, the scarlet lipstick, and most shattering of all, the massive shored-up bosom that projected like a balcony in front of her. It stuck out so far it was a miracle she didn't topple forward with the weight of it all. And there she stood, this pneumatic giant, swath, 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 I don't know, I... That word goes both ways for me. <laughs> Goes both ways. <laughs> okay. Swathed from neck to ankles in the stars and stripes of the American flag. Mrs. Elvira Ponsonby, I murmured. I am Mrs. Ponsonby. She boomed. Let's try it again. I am Mrs. Ponsonby. She boomed. What do you want? I am extremely busy. And we shall end it right there. <laughs> great place to stop great place to stop um it actually ends on a sentence too i was going to stop like two pages before but then i thought no you know what we'll, we'll just keep reading we'll just keep reading for a half hour um yeah that was oh god my fucking shoulder ah oh, jeez yeah i've lost all feelings in my arms blah anyway that was day 67 of the 100 days of narration challenge middle of roald dahl week and that was bitch bitch by roald dahl bitch uh i don't know why my page flipping managed to fall onto um one of the um hmm yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there that probably would not uh, pass muster in books these 
days, possibly. Oh, wait, no, I forgot. We live in an age where Fifty Shades of Grey is a top, uh, uh, is a bestseller. My mistake. Anyway, and and this was great, and this was actually pretty, pretty fun to read. Anyway, um, day 67 done tomorrow. Come back for day 68. We're still in the middle of Roald Dahl week. Two more days of Roald Dahl week, and then we'll do, I don't know, another theme week. Another theme week, and uh, hope to see you there. Hey, you seem like a cool, wonderful, and or awesome individual with impeccable taste in voice actors. So why not follow me on Facebook or Twitter? You can keep up with the latest projects I'm in, or that my friends are in, or that you could be in because I occasionally post links to open editions to various projects that require voice acting out there, or that nobody's in, but they're interesting projects nonetheless that you may also find interesting. Also, lots of random thoughts about whatever is on my mind at that particular moment. Usually it's about food or video games or foodie video games. Mmm. Anyway, you can follow me on Facebook at OmadonVA or Twitter at Omadon. Hope to see you there.